Hi, in tonight's tutorial, I'm going to go over something that someone kind of um, messaged me about that they want to see how to do. That is how to kind of control the control types from a button. So let's start off by starting with a new Unity project. I'm going to do a 3D project, and I'll just call it um, change control. I'll call it the buttons tutorial. Here's the new project, and let me just drag an asset in there, the texture for the floor, drag it into my assets there, and now let me go fill screen. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make the menu screen. So let's just take this sample scene and save it as, we'll just call it menu, and we'll put it in the scenes folder here and say save. I want to add the canvas, game object UI canvas. And in the canvas, we could add a text box. And on that text box, we can't see it right now. So let's just set up the screen, double click on canvas. So we can see what we're working with here. I just clicked the 2D here instead of the regular 3D view. I clicked the 2D view. And now this is kind of like this white box outlines what's going to show on the screen. So this first text here, let's call it menu screen like I did before. And just so that you can see the font better, let's increase the size. I increased the size bigger than the box. So I could either make the box big enough to fit it, or I could use wrap and truncate. I'll just make the box big enough to fit it. And then over here, I'll click this to open up. And then I'll press the Alt key to change it to the dockings. And I'll dock menu screen up to the top. But I'll just drag it down a little bit from the top. OK, so that's my menu screen title. So I'll just call this title, text title. Then I'll add two buttons. So let's add a button one. And this one will be button keyboard. And I'll add another button um, UI button. And this one I'll call it button mouse for the mouse control. OK, and let's just change the text on button keyboard to say keyboard. And we'll change the text on the button mouse to say mouse. All right, they're right on top of each other. So let's just rearrange things a little here. And let me click on button keyboard. And let's see, click to open this. And I'll have it, yeah, centered. And then I'll just move it up. I'll move it up from the center line for keyboard. And then I'll select the button mouse, click. Alt centered, and then have it move down from the center line. OK, so that's cool. Now let's have something to show what the button is that they pressed. So I'll have another text that I'll add in. And this be text control type to show what the type is currently. And that we could, where is it? Right here in the middle. Yep. Let's just move that down. And it's right below. And let's make the font a little bigger. Let's make it like a 20. And we don't know how big is that text going to be. So let's just turn on the overflow. So whatever gets typed in. And also, let's center the text there. And now you pick your um, keys that you want to play a keyboard or mouse. Then you're going to have to press the button to actually play. So let's add one more button for play. And we'll call it button play. And the text for it will say is play. Let me select the button and move it down below the new text. OK, so now we got the three buttons. So let's save it. And let's start getting something going on here. Like when we press a button, we want the screen to say what the control type is going to be, but we're going to have to save what the control type is picked in a script somewhere. So let me just make a globals script. It's just being called globals. You can call it whatever you want. But the main thing when I open that script is this. I want to make this a static class that the values in this class will exist for the whole time that somebody's playing the game. All right. I don't need these functions, but I do need a variable public int control type all right, to store what the control type that somebody picked is. So by default, I'm going to say it's a 1. But I also want to make this static. And then I'm going to make another function that's going to return the string of what, you know, a description for the control type to show on the screen. Public static string set control type and get description. right? And then here you could pass in an integer for the type. So then control type will equal type. And then based on what the t control type is, we're going to pass back a string. So if it was a 1, we'll pass back keyboard. And then if it's a 2, we'll pass back mouse. And this is so we could show it on the screen. OK. And I spelled return wrong. I know. Let me make this bigger. Return. And then um, just so that this always passes back a value, as you can see here, there's a way you can get through this. Not all code pass return a value. We'll just say default. If it's not one of those, then we'll return the control type 
that to string, which we're not expecting this to happen, but if it does, then we'll see a number. Okay. All right, so we have this global class. Let's go back to Unity here and make sure it compiles. Yeah. All right, now we need a class so that the buttons could call a function somewhere and do something. So let's make a, another script and we'll just call it um, buttons to handle the button presses. And we're going to put this button script here on the canvas. Okay, so here it is, the button script's on the canvas. Now let's open it up and start um, editing it. So all we have to have here are some public methods, public void button keyboard click. We'll just call it something for the button to call to do something. And here we'll say globals dot set control type and get description is going to equal one. And this we will set, it's going to pass back a string so we can set this. So on the buttons class, let's just have a, um, we want that control public. That's going to be a UI text control. So let's in, let's include a using statement using unity engine dot UI. So I could have the text control text and we'll call it text control type. And here it'll just equal null. Boop, boop. In the global class, it's just a variable. Then we'll have another one, public void button mouse click. If somebody clicks that, then text control type dot text will equal globals dot set control type get description two. So two's gonna be mouse, one's gonna be the keyboard. And we put that button script on the canvas and now it wants to know what the control type control is. So let's just drag that there and give it to it. All right, now we have this one more button that's gonna do a play. We'll get to that one once we finish the screen because it's gonna have to load another scene. Hmm, these are grayed out, don't need them. Do some cleanup. These are all grayed out, don't need any of them. Let's clean them out. I actually have to tell the buttons what to do when you press them. So I'm gonna select the keyboard button and with the keyboard button selected, I scroll down here to the on click and I can tell it what to do on click. So let me add something for it to do. So the script that has what it's gonna do, it's the canvas object. And now in the canvas object, I could pick buttons, um, keyboard click from my button script. And I do the same thing with the mouse. I select the mouse and then I'm gonna add to do something from the canvas scripts. And I'm gonna use the buttons script on canvas and do mouse click action. All right, let's see that work real fast. See to see if these buttons are communicating with the script behind them. Now if I press keyboard, this says keyboard. If I press mouse, that says mouse. Okay, so those are doing something. And play right now, it doesn't do anything. All right, let's add another scene. So let's say file new scene and pick 3D one there. And let's turn off the 2D view so we can see things normal. And now let's put some stuff in here. Let's call this scene um, save as in the scenes folder. We'll call this one the game. Okay, and here in the game scene, let's just add something like a floor, 3D object cube, and go ahead, just call this floor, and let's focus down on the floor there, all right, and let's just make it bigger, 20 by 20, and go down by minus one, and here's the floor texture, I'll just put that on there, and then um, with the floor, this is forward, so let me just rotate this around. Okay, so that's forward. So then let's add a player on the floor, game object, 3D object, and we'll just add a cube that could be the player. So I'll call it player, all right? And let's just give the player a different color so it stands out a little bit more like we did in the thing. So we create a material here and I'll call it the player material and let's give it a color that's not white so it stands out. I did green, let's do blue. I did green in the demonstration. Let's do blue so it's different. Now we got a player, right? Let's go back up to the assets folder. We're going to need a player script that's going to control the movement of the player. So let's create another script and let's call it player for the player script. And we'll drag and drop that on the player. Okay, come on. There you go. So here it is, player script. All right. All right. I know I don't need those. I like typing these myself. All right. So first thing I need is this, some variables like public float, the move speed, like how fast the player is going to move. And I'll just say 3.5. It's public, so you could change the value in the inspector. Then I'm going to need, um, well, let's stop with that. First, let's do the keyboard controls. So private void update is the function. And let's see, for the keyboard controls, well, here in the update function, we're not going to know which controls. So we're going to have to switch which kind of controls we read based on the globals.control type that we put in our global script. And if I do two, I'm going to call a different function. Okay. So here, let's add these methods, private void keyboard for the keyboard controlling, and then we'll have a private void mouse for the mouse controlling. 
Oopsie. We wanted to do on mouse down. I just want mouse. Mouse. Okay. So we got these two functions. So now with the functions existing, I can say here, call keyboard. And if it's a two, then call mouse. Okay. So in the keyboard, let's just um, put some basic keyboard controls in there. So let me just paste this code in here. All right. I'm going to use the WASD keys to move forward, back, left, and right. So I pop those in for the keyboard controls. And then for the mouse controls, let's just use a you know point and click thing. So you click in the scene and then you know you use the mouse button, the um, right mouse button is zero. You click in the scene, then it does a ray cast to figure out where in the scene that is. And then it's gonna use a nav mesh agent to move to that point. So NMA is a variable we need. We need a nav mesh agent. So we know that using nav mesh agent, we're gonna have to include Unity Engine.ai. Okay. And then we're going to need um, public um, nav mesh agent NMA. We're going to need a nav mesh agent um, component. All right, so let's go back to the scene. For the mouse controls, we're going to need we're going to need to add a nav. We are going to need to add a nav mesh. So how do you add a nav mesh? Well, we're going to need the nav mesh window. So let's see here. In where do I get that nav mesh window? AI navigation. And here we have a navigation window. I go to the bake. And what it's going to do is going to bake all static objects with a nav mesh on them. So let's make sure that the floor is static. Then we go back to navigation and we press bake. And real quickly, it makes this blue area, which is a nav mesh down on the player. Let me select the player. And here's in the inspector. I'm just going to add a nav mesh agent component, which will be a navigation nav mesh agent. Okay. So now this nav mesh agent component will allow me to tell it to move somewhere on the nav mesh and it'll go there. So we could tell it that in the code right here. So let's see, I have this public nav mesh agent. The script needs to know what that is. So let me pick the player and the script right here wants to know what the nav mesh agent is. So let's just drag this and drop it there so the script knows what it is. Then in the script, now NMA will be set. And when you want to tell the um, game object to move to somewhere on the nav mesh, you just use that nav mesh agent and say set destination and you give it a vector three, a position. Okay, so now I have the keyboard control and I have the mouse control on my player. Um, there's one thing though, when you go to nav mesh mode, it's using um, nav mesh agent set destination. When I go to keyboard controls, I don't want the nav mesh agent to work anymore. So I better put in here a reset path. Now to jump from one scene to another, we have to go to the build settings. So let's go to file, build settings. And over here in scenes and build, we can add scenes. So let's go to scenes over here. And sample scene we don't need. Let's delete that. Okay. So we're going to have the menu screen first, and then we're going to have the game scene. Okay. Those are the two scenes. Now, if I go back to the menu screen, let's go to that one menu scene, 2D view, view the canvas here. Okay. We have to do the play button so we could go to the game screen. So what we'll do is uh, let's go to the button script and add a function for button play click. So public void button play click. And what we're going to want to do is we're going to jump from one scene to another. So we need to use unity engine dot scene management. And then over here, we could use the scene manager and we're going to load a scene and we'll load scene one scene manager load scene. All right. So when it loads the scenes, it wants an index of the scene. So I picked one, one is my game scene. Zero is my menu scene. And that shows here in the build settings. See, scene one is, menu is zero, and the game scene is one, okay? That's where I get the number from. So now let's collect, connect the um, button click event to the button. So I select button play, and here in the on clicks, I put the button script on canvas, and then from the button script, I want to do button play click. File and save. Okay, we're getting somewhere. New text, I guess when this loads up, it should set that new text. So let's see, where's my button script? Right here, it knows the text control type. Let's go to the button script and let's say when the button script loads up, public void, no, it's private void, start. Private void, start, okay, that's from the model behavior class. We'll say that text control type dot text equals the globals dot, so control type get description globals.control type. And that should take care of this saying new text so we could tell what control scheme is operating when we press play. So now I'm going to press play. 
and there you go, it's on keyboard. See? So this scene, this menu scene is complete. Now let me go to the game scene. Let me center it a little bit. Save that. Now what I want to do is also put buttons here so when we're playing the game we can switch. So let me add a canvas here too. Three object UI um, canvas. And then to this canvas, I'm going to add the buttons again. So I will create a button for the button keyboard. And I'll create a button for button play. UI button, button play, um, I mean button mouse, sorry. So I got keyboard and mouse. Let's call this one keyboard. And let's call this one the, the text on it mouse. OK, we got the two buttons. We're going to need a, the button script somewhere. So let's take that button script and throw it on this canvas, too. So here's the button script. Throw it on the canvas. So the first button keyboard, we're going to call the script on the canvas, the buttons script, and keyboard click. And then on the button mouse, we'll call the script on the canvas and be like button mouse. Um, now, where are the buttons? Let's kind of. We look at the game view. So right now they're in the middle. So let's say button keyboard. Let's go to the positioning, use the alt key, and put it in the top corner. Then for button mouse, same thing. Let's put it in the top corner. And then we'll just move it down a little bit. All right, then one more thing we'll put is the control type to show on the screen. So let's put text, text. And we'll call this text control type. And we will position it also in the top. Alt key and click. And there it is. Let's give it 95 instead of 80. So it lines up. And then let's move it down right there so it could tell us. And let's make the font a little bit bigger, 20. And let's center the text. OK, that looks good. So let's save all that. Then in the button script is where I set the control type text. Boom, that's what that is. Oh, OK. All right, think. So now let's see the whole thing all together, starting from the menu screen. All right, so let's go to the menu screen here, and let's press play here. And let's say that right now the control is keyboard. Let's make sure this works. Keyboard, mouse. So now it's on mouse. Now I'm going to go to the play. And here it is. Now um, I'm on mouse. See, it says it right there. So now I could click and move with the mouse. And if I switch it to keyboard, I click. And now I move with the WASD keys. All right, good. Now just one more test. Let's go from the menu screen. And instead of starting with mouse, let's start with keyboard. So I press play. And now here you see it's keyboard. So I'm going to press play. And then here it says keyboard too. That's good. And now I'll move with the WASD keys. Good. And now I switch to mouse. Good. It moves with either or. Great. So let's go over it real fast. I have three. I have two different scenes. I have a menu scene so I can pick my control before I start to play. And then I have a game scene where I play. Now, just for the heck of it, you know, for us to show, you could also set it when you're playing the game on the same scene. I put these buttons here, too. When you press a button, it's going to go ahead and run something in a script. OK, I have three scripts here. I have a button script, so I could have the events that are called for when you click a button. And those things, what they do is they set a variable in my static class here. I called my class globals. You can call your class whatever you want. But whatever you call it, when you mention it in other things, I'm going to have to use the word globals here because I called it globals here. OK, if I call it my banana, then over here, I'll have to say my banana dot. Now in globals, it's static class, meaning it exists for all the scripts at all times when your game is being played. The class is static. My variable is static. My method is static. OK, so we got that. The button script is what the buttons call to set the control type variable in globals. Now, since the variables in globals, right here in my player script, I can call globals control type to see which one to use. You made it to the end of the video. I'm so proud of you. This is my website. The main thing I want to show you is that for any of these videos that you've seen on YouTube, I have the tutorial section, which has the blue links for the projects, and the orange links are the files. Also, you could go over here and play some of the games we made in the game camp.